is the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. Hello, dear friends. I am the Celebrity Medium, back with another edition of the Celebrity Afterlife Report, the only show on the internet that brings you the up-to-the-minute gossip about all your favorite deceased celebs. If you are a new listener to the report, thank you for joining our growing audience. If you've been with us for some time, thank you for spreading the word about the program so we can continue to bring you the scoops from the next world celebrity scene. And that is exactly what I'm going to do right now. The name Richard D. Trentledge almost certainly doesn't ring any bells for most of you, if not damn near all of you. He wasn't exactly a household name when he was on the earthly plane. So why, you ask, is he being talked about on the Celebrity Afterlife Report? Well, as it turns out, Among Mr. Trentledge's accomplishments is the fact that he wrote a song that nearly everyone listening right now knows and that many of you have had stuck in your heads at one time or another. It's the Oscar Mayer Wiener jingle. You know, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer Wiener. I know that's going to be rattling around in your brain for the rest of the day. Anyway, that infectious little tune, which debuted in 1963, was written by Mr. Trentledge who transitioned to the afterlife recently. Now, not having a recognizable face, he was not greeted by a large crowd when he arrived, but there was one man there who greeted him very warmly. That man was Rudd Weatherwax, who, as regular listeners to the report know, is the man who created the Lassie movies and TV show. Weatherwax recently announced he was forming an all-dog cable channel An announcement that was greeted with a lot of skepticism and an equal amount of ridicule in the next world. Weatherwax has since hired actor, director, comedy writer Gary Marshall to be the creative director of the network, which will have a 24-7 lineup of programming featuring canines but no humans. When Richard Trentledge arrived, Weatherwax immediately immediately offered him a job as musical director for the yet-to-air channel. A source who happened to be present at the meeting between the two men tells me that Trentledge laughed heartily when Weatherwax explained the premise of the network and what his job would entail before accepting the offer. You know, wanting to see just how crazy this network's going to be when it finally goes live is one of the things that makes me wish I could visit the afterlife. Well, it seems that Rudd Weatherwax and Gary Marshall are both on a hiring spree these days. If, like me, you are a fan of the Cartoon Network's block of shows known as Adult Swim, you may be familiar with the name C. Martin Croker. Mr. Croker, who recently arrived in The Next World, was an animator for the network, as well as the voice of several characters on it, including Zorak and Moltar, an unspecified kind of bug and a robot who were the sworn enemies of Space Ghost who hosted his own talk show for about a decade on Adult Swim. A few days after he arrived in the afterlife, Messrs. Weatherwax and Marshall sought Croker out and asked him if he'd be interested in providing the voices of the canine anchors on their network's evening news program. Yes, I know, it's an all-dog news program. You know, what can I say? (laughs) Gary Marshall gave an interview to an Afterlife newspaper the other day, in which he said that Croker told him the idea was more insane than anything he ever worked on for Adult Swim and that he would be delighted to do the voices for the show. According to the interview, Croker asked for the title Network Vice President in Charge of Vocalization and that Marshall was only too happy to give it to him. Regular listeners to the report know the ongoing saga of former Doors singer Jim Morrison, 
The Lizard King just seems to lurch from failed project to failed project. His latest, a revival of his band, The Real Legends, has seemed fated to also crash and burn, despite a recent gig at the Afterlife's version of CBGB's, where the group was, perhaps ironically, treated to a standing ovation. I'm told that The Real Legends followed that one up with an unadvertised show in a tiny club where the crowd was not as receptive as the CBGB's one. The Real Legends were booed off the stage, again. Next World rock critics have written articles in which they implore Morrison to give it up and break up the band. Friends of Jim have been whispering that they expected him to follow that advice any day now. To the rescue, however, came an unlikely white knight. Jerry Heller was the manager of the influential rap group NWA. Now, as a, a middle-aged white guy, he seemed unlikely to be the one to help jumpstart the career of a group that articulated black anger in American society, but Heller propelled NWA to superstardom. Apparently, Heller was in the audience for the Real Legends show at CBGB, and he approached Morrison afterwards. A source tells me he told the singer he, quote, saw something in the show and that he was willing to put his expertise toward helping Morrison salvage the band. Morrison's reaction was described to me as skeptical but curious, and he accepted Heller's offer on the spot. Word is that since then, the two have met several times to discuss marketing and strategy, and that Morrison is cautiously optimistic that the real legends can finally get past the horrible reputation the group currently has. <music> Lastly, former First Lady Jackie Kennedy is said to have no plans whatsoever to abandon her 24-7 impersonation of actress Marilyn Monroe, despite Monroe's anger over it. Jackie has been appearing on TV talk shows in the next world, answering questions in her best Marilyn voice, as well as lining up movie roles in which she will essentially be playing Monroe. Some close to her are whispering that she seems as if she doesn't know where Jackie ends and the faux Marilyn begins these days. I'm told that she's taking voice lessons so that she will sound exactly like the actress. Her friends are saying that Monroe is fuming over the impersonation. But in the absence of an actual court system in the afterlife, it doesn't seem to be much she can do to stop it. And I think that'll wrap things up for this edition of the Celebrity Afterlife Report. I'll be back next week with another roundup of the latest gossip about all your favorite deceased celebs. I hope you'll join me then, and also that you will help spread the word about the report by telling everyone you know that it is available for free on iTunes, in the Google Play Store, and on K Chung Radio AM 1630 in Los Angeles. I am the Celebrity Medium. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. To ask a question about your favorite deceased celebrity, call 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-369-3732.